This video is going to go over how to make banners in Illustrator, just like the ones you see right here. Um, it's really easy, and you can do these in like under a minute once you're used to it. Um, they go pretty quick. So let's start by making this one right here on the top. And this is kind of like the base point for making these other two styles, so it's kind of like your building block to work from. The first thing you want to do is go over to your, uh, your fill and stroke and set the fill to white, which it already is, and then set your stroke to black. I have to redo that. And I'm just going to make the weight of the stroke two points so I can see it a bit better. I'm also going to change the cap and corner under the stroke here to round. And if you don't have your stroke window open, it's just under window and then stroke. And you're also going to want your appearance window open, and I'll go over why in a little bit, but that's under window appearance. So the first thing we're going to do is make a rectangle. Uh, select the rectangle tool here and just draw a nice uh, rectangle. I'm trying to basically emulate this, so as long as it's somewhat close, it's perfectly fine. It's not a huge deal. Um, and once we do that, I'm going to select it and hit Control c Control v on a PC or Command-C, Command-V on a Mac. And I'm just going to drag this point here and make this a little bit more of a square shape. We're basically trying to emulate this, so there's a little bit of a rectangle going on, just a little bit longer. But as long as it's relatively close to that, um, good enough. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in. And what I'm looking at here is you can see there's these points that basically demonstrate where the corner is and where the center is of each line. So I'm going to hover over this, this center line right here on the left side. I'm going to hit the plus sign, and that brings up the pen tools at a point. I'm just going to kind of click there. And that way we know, we know we have a point to drag from right in the middle of the line. And then I'm using the... Uh, the direct selection tool looks like a white arrow. And I'm going to drag over that point, and while holding shift, I'm going to drag right, which will make it perfectly uh, go perfectly left or right. That way, you're not you know accidentally dragging it off center. But there we have this this corner basically made already. And as you can see, it it ends up in front of this rectangle, but we want it behind it. So I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to right click or control click if you don't have a right click button, and go to transform or actually arrange, send it back. You can kind of just kind of move it to where you think it looks pretty close to what I got going up here. Uh, once again, it's not super important how exactly it falls. Next, I'm going to bring up the line tool, which is backslash as a stock shortcut. Or if you don't have that, it's just right here. It's called line segment tool right below the type. I'm going to turn off the fill by selecting it in this, uh, this red slash mark here. We don't want any fill. And I'm basically going to try to draw a line from right here right through the corner. Um, I'm not going to be super picky about making sure this lines up, but zoom is your friend, and make sure you just have the direct selection tool selected, and that way you can kind of click it, grab one of the points, and kind of maneuver it over to where it needs to be. Next, I'm going to hit V, which automatically brings up the selection tool. I'm going to drag over these two things and hit Control-G on a PC or Command-G on a Mac. That made it pop in front again, but we can just go to Range, send it back. And I'm going to hold Alt over like right about here, and I'm just going to drag it while holding Shift, which makes it, holding Alt basically makes it duplicate itself, and holding Shift once again makes it go perfectly left and right, or up and down depending. And once again, I'm going to right click or Control click and select Transform, and then Reflect. And we're going to want to reflect vertical, which basically flips it on its side, so it can make the side over here. I'm just going to drag this over, and uh, I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. Um, when I'm dragging it like this, I'm watching this point line right here, and I'm trying to line it up right on this corner. Uh, take a little bit of messing around with, but this is good enough for what we're doing. And there you have it. The basic banner shape is ready to go. So next, what we're going to do is with a, the selection tool here, just drag over the whole thing and hit Control-G on a PC or Command-G on a Mac, and that's going to group it. So that way, when you're working with this... Uh, you can select any point and the whole thing is going to move. Um, actually, you can actually save that for later too if you want. But I'm just going to drag over this type. And you can use whatever font you want for your project. Uh, just pick one you like. This is a pretty basic font just for the purpose of demonstrating it. It's behind it, so I'm going to go to right click, arrange, bring to front. And just pop it on here. And actually, now would be the best time to group it. So once you have a type kind of set up and filled in the box the way you think it looks good, um, Use the direct selection tool, or just the selection tool actually, and drag over everything, and then hit Control G on a PC or Command G on a Mac, and now this whole thing is grouped together. And that's going to save you a lot of problems with basically 
running effects on it, which will give you these two looks right here. So now that we've done this, I'm just going to hold Alt and drag down while holding Shift. So that way it drags the whole thing down and it copies it. I don't have to hit Control c Control v um, Just select it. And this is the fun part because it's so easy. Um, go to Effect, Warp, and then Arc. And we're going to want to hit Preview right here. And as you can see, it very, very quickly makes a, a cool banner shape with a little bit of a curve. And you can just, you know, set it to however you want. Get the look you're trying to go for. And then we're actually going to draw, uh, go over here to the direct selection tool and kind of highlight this area until we get the corner of this. Um, since there's an effect applied, if you look at it, you can kind of tell the effect is making it look different, but all the points are exactly the same. So when you drag over it with the direct selection tool here, you just got to kind of go for the actual point. And I'm going to drag it over just a little bit to try to get these edges looking a bit better. I'm holding shift when I drag too, so then it's perfectly straight. And that way it keeps the style in line with what you're trying to do. Alternatively, if you don't want to do it that way, because it's kind of imprecise, you got to guess where that point is by looking at these blue uh, lines, you can actually go to Object, Expand Appearance. And that way all your uh, strokes and lines look just like you'd expect. And you can just kind of manually drag them over that way. The downside of doing it is, as you can see when I just did this right here, it you got to mess around with the points a bit more and kind of fiddle with all the endpoints. Uh, so it's a little bit slower, but you know exactly where each point is because it's you know it's where it looks like it is. Where with this, it's kind of guesswork. And now for this one right here, which is a, a different effect. So I'm just going to hold Alt and drag our starting point down here again while holding Shift. And we're going to go to Effect. Uh, warp, and then flag. And I'm going to hit preview so we can kind of see what this looks like. And all i got to do here is uh, play with the bend. You know, from a really light bend here, and you can go pretty aggressive. But as you can see, it starts freaking out the corners the more and more you do this. So I usually try to do something a little bit lighter. And just hit OK. And you can do it, you know, negative as well, which will make the left side go up. Just hit OK. And once again, I'm going to take the direct selection tool and kind of drag over this whole area and just kind of hold shift and push this in a little bit. That one actually looks pretty good already. I don't have to mess with it. But there you have it. Um, once you get this base point built, these other ones are really fast. And while I said uh, to bring in the appearance window, what's cool about the appearance window is like, let's say I just drag over this and I want to change this warp. <coughs> The appearance shows right here where the warp was applied, so you can hit this eyeball looking icon to toggle it on or off. You can actually just click right here where it says warp flag, hit preview again, and then you can just kind of adjust it as needed to get, if you wanted it to look a little bit different or it wasn't working out for you, you can change it all right from appearance, or you can actually just delete the effect altogether um, if that's what you're looking to do. And after that, it's all just kind of style stuff. Um, to do this, you know, all I did is, oops. I didn't group these yet. Just go here, you know, pick a color for it that you think will look good. I'm actually going to right click or control click and ungroup. So it's selecting each one. And then go into fill and pick a color that looks good. Uh, good enough. I'm just going to select each of these points. I'm going to hold shift while selecting both of them. That way you can select them both at the same time. And then hit I, which brings up the eyedropper, which is also right here in your toolbar. And just click on this middle one so it's the exact same color. And then I'm going to select all these different ones. Whoops, don't want the text. And you can change the actual outline stroke here to whatever you want. Um, just to replicate the one on top here, I'm going to do it in white. And then change the text to white. And there you have that style. And you can just, you know, you could group this all again. You know, select it all, hit Control-G or Command-G on a Mac. Drag it down while holding Alt. And then you can go to Effect, Warp, Arc. Apply an arc to it. So there you have it. That sums up pretty much everything that I can think of. Um, these are all just kind of building blocks, starting points. You can go in and customize them as you see fit. And hopefully make some really cool stuff. 
Um, if this was helpful, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.